in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Of course, I am the gatekeeper of this internet ministry known here on YouTube as the Mighty. Let's count to three. Mighty. Mighty. Mm. And you snub number seven. Just like joining a, a sorority, ain't it? <laughs> ah, I am your brother. And hopefully your friend. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm having problems with my with my voice. But we're gonna try to try to make it through this lecture. Hopefully it does not go a long time. <laughs> I'm hopefully your friend, Talik Ebin Ra. Before we uh, discuss the topic of this video, of which we'll be referencing from Alex Haley's book called Roots, I want to bring up a scene from the movie where Kuta Kente is expressing his religious or spiritual side. But first, I would like to talk about the continued attack upon the black woman that I really see on YouTube. I don't know if it's out in general society. I really don't hear black men talking about these black women this and the black woman that. But on YouTube, these black males have become obsessed with pointing fingers at the black woman. And I would tell you this. The poor sisters, you are not in the best condition that you could be in. But at the same time, you don't deserve, not from your males, this continued bashing that you're getting. So when you come to this house, you don't have to worry about that. This video, and I hope it is worthy. This talk, this discussion, this video lecture is dedicated to the black woman, those who are descendants of slaves born in America, my beautiful sisters. And I would like to send a special shout out to my sister, Yahweh's servant, to my sister, Fanadia. To my sisters, Black Woman Dean and I know I'm going to get it wrong, Sala Sabe, something like that. I always get it wrong, I can't, but you know who I'm talking about. And some of these other sisters have these usernames I really can't pronounce, but you know that we uh, talk all the time, we comment on the videos. So all my Beautiful sisters, and I even want to say to any female that's out there, regardless of your race, because women are wonderful to me. I could never be homosexual. The female, the woman, is just, woo, y'all just, mm, mm, mm. Camel soup, mm, mm, good. <laughs> I love you. I really do. There's nothing more beautiful than a female when she is in her right state of mind. And I want to say this very quickly. Your brother Talik is not a pervert. But when a woman expresses herself in an intellectual way, respectful, honorable, courteous, civil way, that turns me on. So I got to flirt with you. 
But Brother Talik is not a pervert. You can easily say to me, Brother, I like what you bring to YouTube. But I think you're trying to romance me, and I don't like it. <laughs> because I like what you bring again to YouTube. But though that but you try to romance me, well, that sort of gives me the shivers. You're not my type. You make me throw up. <laughs> hey, look, I can I can handle that. It's no big deal. You don't have to worry about me or these claims of Brother Talik stalking some damn body. That's a damn lie. I just admire women who are smart, educated, intellectual. When you are progressing or evolving to the highest heights, when you, for some of you, when you begin to embrace your spirituality, some of you call it that, and it brings out the best in you. And when a woman is doing her best, and then physically she is eating right, and she's exercising and doing all that she can, oh man, that's, woo, that's attractive to me, and I can't help it. So please excuse me if I'm attracted to the beauty, not so much the booty, because <laughs> I can't see your booty. I might take a peek, though. <laughs> oh, man. The man who awakened me from the dead, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, taught me through a book. He said that a man doesn't look good until he looks good in the eyes of a woman. At this time, the black man, and maybe that's why he's so angry, he does not look good in the eyes of his females. I don't care if she's black woman Dean or Laquita, they say that they are attacking the sisters that are so-called ghetto. What made the sisters ghetto? What makes them ignorant? What makes them other than the beautiful woman or women that I have just described? It is because her man, the male of whom some of y'all in religious teaching supposed to be her protector, supposed to be the one who protects her and her children, that is the provider, you have failed. You are a destroyed man for over 400 years. And if you don't like Shaquita and Aquanetta and all the so-called ghetto sisters, then you need to blame yourself because the woman reflects her man and the Children reflects the woman, in fact, both parents. But the children basically reflects the woman because y'all men or you males, you leave your children alone with the woman by herself. So when you leave, another male steps in, maybe another black man, but usually it's the oppressor. He is the one that takes care of her now. You are a destroyed male. And you want respect and love and honor. And you expect this black woman to behave the way you feel she should behave when you don't do nothing for her. If you don't like how she behaves, if you don't like how she acts, then you need to blame male. You need to blame the man. This poor black woman, Shaquita and Antoinetta and these sisters, their men have been destroyed. And you have been a destroyed man for over 400 years. The oppressor educates your babies. How 
houses your woman and your babies. Gives your woman a job so she can take care of your babies that you left, left that you left her alone in the house with. And then the oppressor, this white man, he uh, romances the black woman. He knows how to smile. He takes care of her children, gives her a job. So she got to have somebody. And you are always attracted to, attracted to being nice than being bullied and talked about. So the black woman slowly turns herself over to the oppressor. At one time, she had to be raped. But now it's gotten to the point where she's just tired of fighting. Because she has to fight the white man. And she also has to fight this pitiful ass black man. And since the black man don't provide a damn thing. I guess she says in her mind. I might as well gravitate toward the oppressor. And that's what has happened. Because the man, the male has failed to protect her. The male has failed to provide. But it's easier to blame her and she's a victim rather than yourself. Just like white folks and other people blame black people for their ills and for their problems. Because it's easier to blame a victim than the real perpetrator of a crime or a problem. Because you'll blame the black woman and attack her because she's helpless. But you, we don't find these black males attacking the white man. Because the white man has NBC, ABC, YouTube, and all these outlets. And plus, if you get on his nerve, he'll send the police to your damn house, beat your ass, and throw you in jail if he don't outright kill you. So it's easier, y'all punks, to attack women. And you should be shame of yourself. So what do you expect from a woman that's unprotected? When the enemy gives her employment, educates her children, romances her with kindness, so she embraces his world, so the woman that you don't like is a woman that was formed by the oppressor. And she's a victim. She's a victim because that which was supposed to protect, defend, and provide refused to do their job and who by golly is the one who have failed doing their job accepting their responsibility the one who's running their mouth pointing their fingers at Shaquita and Laquita and all and these ghetto sisters who don't have to be ghetto but they have been turned into that way because their males refuse to do what the creation has designed us to do. And that is to protect our DNA. And you have failed. So you blame this poor woman. She's a victim just like you are. She's a victim. But I tell you this. See. See. It's easier to blame another person than yourself. Change yourself. And when you change yourself, you can change others around you. I'll give you a quick example. There was a black woman or black women, they were having problems or they were, they were painting a house by themselves or whatever. They were at the hardware store. And you could see that the paint and all these different materials they was buying, they was heavy. So I approached the sisters and asked them, will you allow me to help you with those heavy items? And they looked at me like I was crazy. I guess they were shocked the man would want to help them do anything. Because usually when males want to help a woman, they have an ulterior, 
alternative, how you said, ulterior motive. And I'm just saying, and I told them, I like helping the sisters. When the sisters come out the store, I grab the handle of the door and open the door for them. They look at you like you out of your mind. And I told the sister, you're not used to black men being a gentleman, are you? And they were not. In order to change the attitudes of the black woman that you run your mouth and talk about, you have to change your own attitude. And you catch, there's an old saying that you catch more bees with honey rather than vinegar. So you be nice to our sisters. And you show them a good example of manhood. And you try to teach them. And show them better. Not talk about what they already know. They already know they are in bad shape. You think Shaquita want to be ghetto for real? Do you think our sisters want to be what they are? They already know. You're not telling them nothing new. What's your solution? What you going to bring to the table to make things different? And as men, as males, you should be educating your children, building schools, Providing the black woman with a job. Since we know that the enemy is tainting her mind. You must create business and a culture and an economy to bring her into. Otherwise, why are you complaining about the result that we already know you're going to get. When our women are allowed and they embrace. The world of our oppressors, those who have kidnapped us and hurt us, terrorized us, mistreated us for over 400 years. What do you expect? But I tell you this. I tell you this. Once, brother, you straighten your out, we straighten ourselves out and become the defender and the provider. They must correlate. They must go hand in hand just like that. You must defend your woman and you must provide. When we begin to do those things, educate her, the woman, educate our children. When we begin to do these things, you will see the ghetto-ness leave our women. And when her mind begins to change, because you change, you got to change first. And when we, we begin to change, once that black woman, because she, see, she loves you, black man. Whether you know it or not, she loves us. But she's defenseless against a vicious and smart enemy. But once you put her in a position where she feels protected, where she feels provided for, then you'll see her get away from those who she don't like anyway. She knows who the enemy is. She knows who done this. Who made her Shaquita. She knows it. You black man. Got to get your act together. Stop being a sissy. And bashing black women. Because these other enemies smile. Because you don't want to do your job. What do you do? All these black men. That bash black women. Always got something negative to say about our sisters. Where are their schools? How many black women do they employ? When was the last time they opened a door for a black woman? When was the last time you did something kind? Just who are you? Maybe your ass just as an enemy as the white man is. And you have to be. Attacking your sisters, your mother. You don't attack your mother. Back in the day, when you attack mama, when you attack the female like that, you got an ass whooping coming. And if you come here, think you're going to attack black women and say negative things about my sisters, you got an ass whooping coming for your buddy. 
That ain't happening here. These black men, these males, you need to get yourself together. But you're a punk and you're a sissy and you're a coward. It's easier to attack a female. You're a woman beater. I don't like woman, women beaters. That's not going to be tolerated in this house. So you go to where all the other little niggas, nigger male sissies is at. Because the black woman is welcome here and will always be welcome in this house. And I tell you this. Once that black woman begins to love you. Once that black woman finds security in you. She ready to go to hell with you if necessary. There's no better partner that a black man should want than a black woman. She's a fighter. She's a warrior. She's there for us. If we, the male, straighten our act up and do what we claim that religion wants us to do, and that is to be the provider and the defender of this female and our family, instead of leaving her with five children alone. I don't tolerate black men that don't take care of their children around me. I don't allow black men to talk about how many women they have slept with and how they abuse and exploit women. I don't allow that around me. And you should neither. But a lot of you, y'all get together and talk about how many women you done laid up with and you talk about the woman in a bad way. You talk about her breasts and her butt and you just as sick as this world that you claim you don't like. Y'all a bunch of sissies. Oh, I could never be a homosexual because I don't like men. These, these black men are the most pathetic, tacky ass. Woo, especially in the last generation. So weak. You think they have no idea what manhood is. They think beating up a black woman or any woman is a sign of a man. They think carrying a gun, that's a man. What happens to your ass when that woman turns around and kick your ass? Or what happens to you when somebody catch you and you don't have your gun with you? You are lost. So in order to get the house together, According to religious teaching, since the head of the house is supposed to be the man or the male, then the man has to get himself together. And once the male get himself together, then he can bring the whole family up. But y'all, tacky ass dudes, you want respect and you want honor, but you don't want to earn it just because you got a penis. I don't give a damn about your penis. And apparently, she don't either. Get her a baby and you can take your nappy head ass on. Because she don't need you. And you really don't like that, do you? You hate when women say, I don't need a man. Well, apparently she don't. She raised her children. Many of her children go to college. Some of them go to jail. But many go to college. They do successful things. And she didn't need your ass. But she would appreciate you. If you was doing, if we was doing what we claim God makes us or wants us to be. And that is to, to be her defender and her protector, her provider, her security blanket, not her basher. And that will not be tolerated in this house. Because the black woman is number one in this house. Without the woman, I would not be talking to you right now. So that's what I want to get off my chest. All black male bashers, don't send me your pitiful ass videos bashing and degrading and trying to make mockery of our women. I block your ass. I don't want to see. I don't even want to know. I don't, I don't even want that type of mentality around me.
and you're damn sure not going to get it off here. Your ass going to get whooped into the ground with your pathetic low life ass. <laughs> I don't like sisters, I'm sorry. I, I, I had, to, had to talk tough to these bums. I don't like when my sisters be uh, beaten on. It ain't necessary, especially from black men. Especially from, well, see, maybe that's the problem. They are dark Europeans. Because a black man would never bash, degrade, and make mockery, especially in the public, his woman. But a dark European, these Uncle Tom, these backyard Negroes, they have no problem because they want to make get brownie points for their massa and for other weak knee black males. But you're not going to get it off here. Take your happy ass on. Move out. Now, oh man, y'all women, y'all, oh man. I love it. Now let us talk about Kuta Kente. And let us talk about religious teachings in general. Alrighty then. Just give me a second to reformulate. Because I didn't, I just saw a video from a person that I thought would be thinking better than that. And it sort of pissed me off, so I just wanted to make my position known without a doubt where I stand. And I stand with the black woman, especially the females. You are born the descendants of slaves right here in America. I could care less what y'all doing or what you did. I'll work with you. We're going to work and deal with this problem, this situation together. There's enough people running around hurting our women while these silly black men want to join. Because they silly, dark European things. I'm still going on this subject. It pisses me off. I love these black women. Oh, I do, I do. I remember... When I was in the Nation of Islam, it was an honor to be on post for Brother Farrakhan. But a lot of times, they would give me the duty of being security for the women of the Nation of Islam, the MGT. And sometimes we would have special guests that was female and they would put me on those posts. And I love it. I like being around womanhood. It's... See, I like brotherhood, but y'all brothers, y'all look a little hard. See, women are feminine. They soft. And their voice is just so, ah, I like, I love that. Especially when that woman is striving to elevate her mind. I remember in Brooklyn, we had a temple, and I would help the sisters cross the street. And in Brooklyn, they would have those six-lane streets. I'd run out there and block all that traffic off. You're going to have to run me over. You need to stop, because this black woman coming through. She needs to cross the street. The black woman had me feeling so strong, I thought I could turn over a damn car. And those people, I guess they thought I was crazy. I stopped six lanes of traffic by myself with a bow tie. See, when you fall in love with your women, and when your women fall in love with you, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you just don't know what you can do. I felt like I could tear them cars to pieces. Don't you hurt this black woman and you respect her. Stop these damn cars. Oh, man, that's a subject in itself. 
But let us let us carry on. Oh man, I just I love us. I love black folks. We need to stop dwelling on negative things and start talking in a way to elevate our people, not tear us down. If you don't like Shaquita, if you don't like these ghetto women, what are you going to do to help them? Anybody can talk about somebody, but what are you going to do? What are you going to say in order to help somebody? Reach out and touch a brother and sister's hand. Make it a better place if you can. And when you show people love and kindness, they will respond. It's very difficult for you to holler and scream and be angry at somebody when they are kind to you, when they are nice to you. That's why some of these sisters are married to men they didn't like because the sisters will go off, oh, you're so ugly, you this, and you're a bum. But the brother just hung in there being kind, being nice, and he got that woman. <laughs> See, we claim we have so much wisdom, well, let's use it. Now that will springboard me into what I really want to talk to us about. In a rush to get knowledge, you have people when you go to their homes, there are countless books. All kinds of books. Books everywhere. If you notice, most of the time when you see me, I don't have books. I've read a few. But you don't see, I usually don't put in the background a lot of books. See, this is what we must understand. Why are we striving? Why are we always trying to learn more knowledge, to try to get more wisdom when we have not mastered what we already know? I'm trying to master and trying to really learn what I already know. If it doesn't make any sense for me to try to learn new things when I have not Master or really know the old things. And I want somebody, I want y'all to take this into consideration. Remember, in getting your wisdom, it's wonderful to have all these books, but we have to always understand no matter what you got, this oppressor, this white man has tainted everything. So since he has tainted, contaminated everything, it will not be good for you if he has touched it. And anything that the oppressor or the enemy gives to you was not designed to make you healthy. It was designed to make you sick and to hinder and stunt your growth. Now we love the Bible. And we love the Holy Quran. But they are both come from the white man. Prophet Muhammad was the white man. He, You might say that he was a good white man, whatever. He still was Caucasian. And of course we know that the Bible was given to us by Caucasian. White people, they are the ones who have tainted the world. They have contaminated things. And they are not going to give us or allow anything to come into your hands or anybody's hands that would make it a benefit for them. Their purpose is to enslave and to control. So even though you have the Holy Bible, so even though you have the Quran, Then look at your condition. Are you free? Or are you in a 
condition of slavery? Or are you in a slave-like condition? One thing for sure, you may not be a physical slave, but you have both the Bible and the Quran, and you still, after all these hundreds of years, you still under somebody else's control, whether you call yourself a slave or not. Do you believe that the oppressor would allow you to have information that you can use to master him? The, check out the source of your information. You talk about the white man is the devil. You talk about the white man is Satan. But your sources of information, the root of your knowledge and where you're getting all your information from, when you look at the root, where do it come from? It came from your enemy. But some of y'all think, like especially when it comes to Prophet Muhammad, he was a good one. Prophet Muhammad came to his people. He did not come to black folks. You can make that claim. But he did not come to black people in America. Let's make that clear. And we know that as a fact. That's something we adopted. Prophet Muhammad did not come to black people in America. Because first of all, we did not even exist during his period of time. That's something we adopted. And of course, we know the Bible was forced upon us. Our ancestors. And us too. Because we was born into it. Didn't have a choice. Now I have just a few more minutes and I want to get into this and bring this talk to conclusion. <clears throat> Let me get a... My voice is so... Woo! I'm killing my voice box. But I want to talk to us so bad. Because I love us. I love y'all. Y'all give me the... Give me that spirit. There was a scene from Roots at Kuta Kente raised his child. I think it was Kizzy. Kuta Kente took Kizzy in his arms and he raised her to the heaven and he told God behold that which is greater than yourself. Now, some of you say that Kuta Kente was a Muslim. But I don't never hear or see in the practice of Islam, I see no Muslim person take their infant and they say, I went out into the field and took my baby and raised my baby to the heaven and told God, I told Allah, behold, this baby is greater than yourself. I never hear about it. I don't see it. So what kind of Islam was Kutakente practicing? Why would a baby, why would Kutakente make a statement that a baby, an infant, that just came into the world, that don't know nothing, why would this baby be greater than God? See, because a baby is pure. A baby has not yet been tainted with and if given the proper guidance and if allowed to mature on his or her own, the baby has the potential to be greater than the parent. And if God is the parent, and God is God, he or she is the, the parent of the child, there is no parent that does not want their child to be greater than them. But when we get a hold of these religions, it stops the process of the baby 
evolving to be greater than the parent being behold that which is greater than yourself. When we get a hold of these religions, it stops the process of becoming better and greater than the parent, greater than God. Then we are taught that we are to worship God or worship the parent instead of becoming greater and better than the parent. So you are stuck in whatever or on the level where your parent was stuck at. You can't go beyond. So here we are in 2011 and you teach the same Islam that was taught 1400 years ago. You teach the same Christianity that was taught 2000 years ago and so on and so on. Because they're stuck. Because instead of becoming greater than God, greater than Jesus, greater than Moses, greater than Muhammad, you be decided to worship them. And you stop your own growing process. Elijah Muhammad taught that God is a man. God lives and dies. So how could a God be born if it was taught to submit to the wisdom of the God prior to it? So if Master Farah Muhammad is the God of this time, if you are taught and God is a man, and that how can a baby be born to go beyond Master Farah Muhammad when he dies, there will be no baby, there will be no wisdom to come into existence to replace him because all babies have been programmed to believe and worship Master Farah Muhammad. When you focus on something that you think is greater than yourself, listen, oh. when you are taught to focus on something that is greater than yourself, when you are taught to be like Mike, Michael Jordan, then you think just reaching to his level is good enough. So you won't strive to be greater than Michael Jordan. So that stunts and hinders a basketball player's individual growth that might have the potential to be greater than Michael Jordan. You have the potential to be greater than the God that you worship, if you understand. That is why Kuta Kente went out in the field and took a baby. Behold, that which is greater than yourself. Something else I noticed from Kuta Kente. Now he was spiritual. Now he's not like me. Uh, uh, clearly, Kuta Kente believe in some kind of supreme being. But they did not show and I don't remember reading in Roots where Kuta Kente did a lot of praying. Pray. In the Christian church, pray. Pray. In Islam, pray, pray, pray. Pray seven times a day. Pray five times a day. Pray nine times a day. What is the purpose of prayer see the purpose of prayer is not something designed by any real God that's something designed by those who control religion they want you to pray to remind you that you are slave that you will never be greater than God and you must submit so if I control the religion then you think that you're submitting to God, but you're really submitting to those who control the religious belief system. So pray to instill your loyalty 
You'll never be better and greater than God. You'll always be a child. And I hear many Christians and other religious believers, no matter how old they get, and even though you've had your wisdom for thousands and thousands of years, they still say, I'm a child of God. So you'll never grow up. You will always be a Peter Pan in religion. If your God is really for you and God is the parent, there is no parent that don't want their children to be better than them. There is no parent that I know of, not a good parent, that wants their children to worship them, submit to them as a slave, a servant. Why would God be a bad parent? Why wouldn't God want the best for you? Why wouldn't God want Why wouldn't God want you to be greater than him or her? Why? Not when you want the best for your children. A good parent always wants their child to be greater and better, smarter, more intelligent than what they were. Behold, that which is greater than yourself. Kuta Kente's God, knowing that Kuta was a slave, did everything to try to free him. And by raising his child up to the heavens, whereas Kuta was a slave, this child has the possibility to be free. Because the oppressor surely cannot enslave God. And that's what Kizzy had the potential to be. Behold that which is greater than yourself. But under these religious belief systems, oh, it is so sad. You have become programmed to accept a slave-like condition. So you will never be greater than God or greater than those who you admire than Jesus or Muhammad or Moses so how are you going to be free? How are you going to become better? You will always be a child of God. You never will become an adult because to become an adult of God means that you are God, period. You're no longer a child. And if you're God, and once you become a God, you can't be enslaved. Because God can make slaves and God can free slaves, but God is not a slave. But if your God is a good God, then that God intent is to free your mind to make you God if they are the if God is the parent. God wants you and me to be like him or her. But right now, under these systems of religion that y'all follow. You have become nothing but spiritual slaves. And you pray seven times a day. You go to church and you sing in your dance. You sing and you dance and you hoop and you holler. So that you can guarantee 
and keep in your mind that you are happy being a slave to somebody or something. And that is sad. Because God, a real God, the true God, that which is the creation which brought you into existence did not bring you here to make you a slave to nobody. Even a slave to itself. That's what you must understand. You are not here to be nobody's servant. You're not here to submit to nobody. You can share the work. But you're not here to serve and make somebody else like better while you live in hell. And that's why you are in hell right now. And when you pray, your praying is instilling in your mind to keep you in hell. So to bring this into in conclusion, I guess it was meant for me to talk with us today. Cause my uh, my voice do hurt, but it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I want to say this while we talk about religion, cause some of our religions is spooky, mysterious. Y'all call it spiritual. What is? When somebody gets spiritual, what do you mean by that? Because I'm very confused. Because when you look at the word and you break it in half, spiritual. You have spirit, then you have ritual. A ritual of the spirit. What is a spirit? The spirit is the essence, according to the dictionary, is the essence of a dead person. Worship of the dead. Why would the living... Worship the dead. And the dead has gone into a place of the unknown. Why would you go into a, a place of the unknown having no idea of what you're doing? Having no idea what you're messing with. So we come up with all this fictional stuff. I get the spirit. The only spirit that I know that black folks really are off into, that you really embrace, is Morgan David, Jack Daniel, Hennessy, liquor. Because you know, liquor is called spirits. That's the only ritual of the spirit, because y'all ritually go to the liquor store and get your beer, get your vodka and your gin, and your wine, and that's a ritual. When you get off work, I gotta get me a beer. There even is a guy that drive, make, make videos, and he drive a car, but he still gotta stop by the bar to get him a beer. He's he still got to get his physical spirits, cause God ain't enough. I still got to have my alcohol. Again, showing the hypocrisy in Christianity. But your religion is spooky because when you are asked to try to explain this spirituality, you really can't. And many people get angry at me because you still act like a Negro to me. I don't see the change in you. I don't see nothing spiritual about you. You still behave like a nigga. You still look like a nigga. You still act like one. And so on and so on. So where is this so-called spirituality that you keep claiming that you, you have attained? Some of these, because of religion, many of us believe in ghosts, goblins or whatever. I was asking a fella one time, excuse me, I was asking a fella one time, 
His grandmother had just passed this life. And he told me that he saw his grandmother last night. I said, wow. He said his grandmother visited him. He, he saw his grandmother. So I said, are you sure that was your grandmother? And he yes, that was my grandmother. So I said, how do you know? Because his grandmother was wearing this sweater, her favorite sweater, her favorite clothes and whatever. And the spirit looked like his grandmother. So I asked him, that was your grandmother's favorite sweater. And he told me that she bought that sweater from Kmart. So you mean to tell me that your grandmother, there's a, a, a Kmart on the other side. Because a spirit don't need clothes at all. So why would this spirit need a sweater? Is it cold on the other side? The spirit got a chill, so this spirit needs a sweater? There's a Kmart and a Walmart in Ghostland, <laughs> you know, on the other side. Come on now. See, we only use, they say, 10% of our brain. So if we use 10% of our brain, and such for instance, these 10 fingers represent our brain, we only use one thumb. So nine fingers ain't doing nothing. So the nine fingers that's not doing nothing, since you have, since you and me have become spookified, and we are taught about these ghosts and spooks, then the nine percent, since I ain't got enough, I don't have nothing else better to do. This guy really missed his grandmother. Let us create the image, and I'm not gonna tell you that what you don't see is not real. It's real to you. That's why nobody else can see it. If you get around other people that think like you, maybe because our brains become connected, we might see it. But that still don't mean that it's real. It's because we have been brainwashed to think of ghosts and spirits. These ghosts, they make noise. They make the house creak and you can hear them walking. How can a spirit, how can you hear a spirit walk when they don't have no weight? And then they walk like they wearing shoes. Come on, people. Come on. But this is what we're taught because of these religious belief systems. Some people say, they hear the ghost talk. A spirit does not have vocals, does not have a larynx. It's spirit. So how is it talking? Well, everything is possible when it comes to God. <laughs> and then you have these people, they chase ghosts. They, they can conjure up the ghost. And most times, you can find out that they are frauds. But we want to see our deceased loved ones. We have been taught this spooky and mysterious religion for so long. We, we know that the fortune tellers and, and the ghost chasers, we know chances are they are fake. And the preachers. I don't let us forget about the preachers because some preachers, some pastors, they can claim they can talk to dead folks too. We want to believe so bad. We don't care. So the preacher and the ghost chaser and these fortune tellers that can't tell their own damn fortune, you 
Give them your money. Because you want to see your mother again. That's passed to the other life. Your brother or a pet or whatever. Because you miss them so. And so you have these scam artists in religion. Ghost chasers and whatever. These scam artists. They are feed into your loss and take advantage of you so they can make money. Hmm. You want to know something else? It's mighty funny. With all your ghosts, with all your spirituality, there's no power on the earth, no nation, no country that has ever been recorded to say they were scared of God. None. They are not, Barack Obama is not afraid of no God. They will drop a bomb on the God. Nowhere. Great Britain, there's no nation on this planet that I, that I have ever heard of scared of no ghosts. Scared of God. And you have preachers and reverends and ministers every day. God going to do this. God going to do that. I warn you. <laughs> I warn you in the name of God. And the, the leader of the nation, the leader of the country, just ignore you. They ignore the pastor and the preachers. Because they only deal with reality. And they know that's not reality. They're not worried about God doing a damn thing to them. But there you are. Ooh, the preacher said God gonna do this. Let me tell y'all something. Earthquakes have always been here. Tsunamis have always been here. Volcanoes have always been here. These preachers and these pastors ain't saying nothing that's out of the ordinary on this planet. And when the earthquake happened, when the tsunami, if you in the way, you good as dead. That's your fault. That's why some ancient people stayed the hell away from certain places. But this is the earth. Let me make this clear. For y'all get caught up in spookism. This is the earth. And within the earth. Is molten rock. That's always moving. Back and forth. Just like the blood in your body. This planet has like a heart. And it's pumping lava. And moving. The planet is alive. Not like we are. But it's alive and moving. And changing. So it will, so there's uh, chemicals in the air. So it will throw water back and forth. The wind will get to churn up. You come from the earth. Can you imagine, like if there were tiny bugs on you, which there are, there are tiny bugs on you. How do they feel when you take a bath and you do what you have to do? And that's all the earth is to us. And if you get in the way, you're dead when, it, when a pimple bursts out. That's all a volcano is. But now, the threat to the human being was not, for example, in Japan, the threat to the human being itself really wasn't the tsunami, but the man-made poison, the nuclear reactor. Because when they build, when they build these nuclear reactors, they do them as cheaply as possible. That's the bottom line. Anybody in business will tell you 
when we do these things, we build them as cheap as possible so we can line our pockets so when we get the profits, we can vacation anywhere in the world. We don't give a damn about public safety and blah, blah, blah. Because they knew where they built this nuclear reactor, they knew that there was a possibility of earthquakes and tsunamis. They did just enough to get over. And so now the Japanese people are being poisoned. And some of the poison is even coming to America. Evil exists because good people do nothing. And because many of, of y'all good people, you're ignorant. We allow these people to risk our lives so they can make money. And then these same fools that's doing this, they will be poisoned by nuclear radiation. Because once it get out, you can't control it. So the rich, greedy ass people, you will die from nuclear radiation. And the poor. So I hope that you enjoy your short life being greedy and selfish. These religions are so spookified and there's nothing spooky about it. Has nothing to do with the punishment of America because if America is to be punished, then people should do it. But because of natural disaster, and some of these that look like natural disasters might not be natural. Because you have those in government experimenting with these weapons that can manipulate and cause earthquakes and tornadoes and snow and whatever. Because they're trying to control the weather and use the weather as a weapon against their enemies. You do know that, right? You ever heard of H-A-R-R-P or whatever they call it, HARP? These are weapons that the government and governments are involved in trying to control the weather to use the weather as a weapon. What's more devastating than an earthquake? And then you can't trace an earthquake. So the United States can cause an earthquake in Japan, but it will look like a natural disaster. It's possible. It's possible because you're dealing with deceivers and liars. What I liked about the nation of Islam, the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, was that his teachings was more real. And it took us away from all that spookism, all that so-called spirituality. But now, when we look, when I look at the nation of Islam now, they look just like a church. Same type of thing, like a church. Sound like a church. Act like a church. No different. So, there is no doubt. If this religion has gone backwards when it was bringing us into our reality, but now it's gone backwards to bring us into spirituality, spookism, this mysterious stuff, then I know for a fact religion is over. So now the people have become fed up with all these religions. And slowly but surely, regardless the color, regardless the race, regardless the gender, regardless to religious belief, they are seeking something to bring them into reality because they know all this is too much false spooky stuff. So now the masses of the people they don't want no no more I believe. I think. 
They now want some facts of that. So that which uh, or that which brings them as close to facts as possible. They want to know. They don't want to believe. They want to know. Because they live. It's very difficult to get facts when you live in a world of deceivers and manipulators. Who hide or contaminate information to suit their personal agendas. Of which is usually creating slaves. And I don't want you to be no slave. I want you to be free. Once and for all. No slave to no God. No man. No nothing. This is your life. It's time for you to enjoy it. The real God. That which brought you into existence. Did not bring you here. To serve nobody. Even itself. There's no animals. Or other life form. Brought into the world. That. Is enslaved to something. That's something that happens by force. Outside of the creation. There's no natural slave. The slave is unnatural. So when you. Decide to submit and worship and bow down to that other than yourself. And your life benefits others. And, and this life does not benefit you. Then you become a slave. And a slave is an unnatural behavior. That's why they want you to pray. Pray, pray, pray. Remember. You are a servant. Remember you are a slave. Don't forget. So remind yourself when you get up in the morning. Remind yourself when you go to sleep. Remind yourself and sing songs and let's dance. I'm happy to be a slave. Your God. The parent. Your real parent. That which the essence which brought you into existence. Is talking to you right now. Because you know it in your heart. I'm not telling you nothing new. Everything that I bring to us. Is not nothing new. It's right here. If you stop being a damn slave to somebody. And be free. That's why you know. That what I'm telling us. Is true. I don't want to convert you to nothing. I want you to be free. Once and for all. And once you free yourself. It frees your babies. And you think that the human being. Has accomplished so many wonderful things right now. Even in our slave like condition. Can you imagine what we can do. I did not say what black people can do. I did not say what white people can do or Asian. I said, can you imagine what the human being can accomplish once we, be, once we become free and get all this and get this damn race monkey and gender bias and classism and all these isms. Once you get all these damn spiritualism, all these isms, isms, isms. When you get all that garbage off your back and free your mind and the rest, like Invo, wants some, and the rest will follow. I love black women, I love the female, but we as human beings, once we get our act together, we as a humanity, we are a beautiful life form. So smart, so classy. High integrity, high honor. You are gods. Not just a child of God, you're God. The only thing that's stopping you from being who we truly are, humanity, are these mental chains that we have been conditioned. To put around our minds ever since our birth. And now that which brought you into existence 
is suggesting and asking us to break them damn shackles. Because you don't have to be a slave unless you want to. I don't want to be a slave. And since I'm free, I'm going to shout to the heavens to everybody around me. Break your chains. It's wonderful to be truly free. You just don't know how good it will feel. Get rid of these chains. And you will see. And if you don't want to get rid of the chain, just do an experiment. Leave all this spirituality, religion, and all this other stuff that we clog our minds up with. Leave it alone just for a month. And live your life and be free. And you will see that things will be better. And just keep, just embrace the, what we call, morality. And live your life. And you will see that things will be much, much easier and there will be no change. And there will be, there will be no argument because there won't be no religion to argue over. There won't be no, I'm a man and men do this. There will be no gender bias. There won't, you don't have to argue about no, over no money because I got more money. All those different things. Break all of it. And just be human. Return back to, to your nature instead of being either a slave or a slave master. We need to get rid of all of that and come back to freedom. Get your life back. You will be amazed once we get rid of this, what our babies, the future generations, and they will, they will not worship you, but the future generations will say, damn, those people who lived during that time they were so smart. They broke them shackles. Shackles that was on the minds of the human being for thousands and thousands of years. This was the generation to break the shackles once and for all. Man, they were special. How did they do it? You did it because it's time. And it's in you to do it. But for some reason... We find joy in being a slave. We have become, instead of trying to break the shackles, we have become content living this life. Do you really want to pass this life down to your babies? Whether you black, white, Asian, look at the life that we live in. War, murder, dropping bombs, killing, pedophilia, rape, fornication, abduction. Is this what you want to continue to your babies? They'll never be able to attain nothing except be savage animals. Because that's what the human being is right now. You're a savage animal. That wear a bow tie. That sing and dance. That make movies. You're nothing but a savage. And the movies and the dancing, when you look at all of it, it reflects a savage. There's nothing intelligent about none of it. Killers and murderers. Greedy, selfish, arrogant, envious, jealous. Is this the type of lifestyle and mentality that you want to continue to pass down to your babies? If that's true, that's why I always say God should destroy all of us. And be done. Because we are doing our future generations a disservice. To pass this madness to future generations. Regardless of color. Because there's nothing happy in America or Europe or Africa. There ain't no damn happiness for nobody nowhere. That's why you got a trip on having some money. And even when you have money, you are not happy. 
ask the people with money how happy they are. Having some money don't make you happy. Ask the people that got money, that have money, how happy they really are. It's not about money. Money don't ain't solving this problem. It's about being human again. Because of slavery, because of religion, because of politics, because of all these isms, they have made us savage and taken our humanity away. So let us begin to seek back our humanity and the first step is to be open and honest and realize we got a problem. But some of us, just like in, in uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, we don't want to admit we are alcoholic. We don't want to admit we are drunk. But that's what we are. But as soon as you can admit that you got a problem, then we can deal with the alcoholism. You have to admit that you have a problem. And you do. Regardless of color, somebody's problem might be worse than another. But everybody that calls themselves human, you got a problem. And the problem is, you're not human. You have been turned into savages. There's nobody civilized on the planet. And if there are civilized human beings, we don't know nothing about them. And when we do find them, we'll turn them into savages. So that defeats the purpose of learning what civilization really is. The best religion, the best politics is to treat a person like you want to be treated. You don't want to be raped. You don't want to be shot. You don't want to. You don't want food to be held away from you. So why would you do that to somebody else? And that's all that it's about. We need to. If you want to pray. Then pray to get your humanity back. You want to pray. Pray to be human. You want to pray. Pray to get these shackles. That we all know. That is keeping us. In a slave like condition. To be broken. And then. You be able to not. You'll, then you'll be able to stop saying, I'm a child of God. You'll be on your way. And our babies will be on their way to saying, dang, we are gods. We don't have to talk about being a child of God no more. We don't have to worship God. We are God. Not slaves of God. Not servants or submit to some God. And when you don't hinder people, they can continue to go up and up and up. You want to go to heaven. Heaven is up. Being a savage is down. That's why you got a string between your butt and you're a drunkard and a pedophile because you're savage. But if you want to go to heaven, then you got to change or have to change your behavior. To a more heavenly plane. And right now. We're not thinking heaven. We're thinking hell. And the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God. In religion. It is taught that it is in you. Here. But your mind is filled with hell. So your hands. Build. Hell. But as soon as your mind. Becomes in a heavenly state then your hands will build the heaven and you don't have to believe in it no more. You'll be living in it because your hands built it and your behavior reflects it. You don't have to guess and think and believe about it. Be about it. It's your reality. And that's what this ministry is about. Bringing all this into our reality. So you don't have to believe in God. 
You will be God. You don't have to believe in going to heaven. You'll be living in it. It's wonderful for it to be real. Thank you for listening. This is your brother Talib Ibn Ra. I love you. I love us. All of us. Because of humanity. If humanity will embrace what the human being really is, this, the way we're living now, is not us. It is unnatural. Know yourself. Know who you are. And it's right here. Just let some of this, let some of this garbage in your mind go. And let the creation talk to you. Raise your baby in the air to the heaven. Behold one that is greater than yourself. And the creation that which brought you into existence will give you your answers. This is the beginning. This is the kindergarten stage. What I'm telling you right now. And it is you be on your way to heaven on earth. Thank you for listening. This is your brother Talib Kim Ra. This was. Thanks for your subscriptions, your views, your help. Think for yourself, brothers and sisters, people. This was and is <laughs> the Reality's Temple on earth.